Greetings and beyond venue. I am Lyo Convoy. We're here today to talk about nerd culture as a whole, some of its problems, and what to do to fix it. But as always, I'll have to give some background here. If you're on this channel, you know what a nerd is. Nerd stuff is generally what this channel covers, however, nerd culture is a bit different. So let's break it down via timeline. Sometime around the 1970s, nerd culture started to emerge as an actual, well, thing. While there had always been niche communities concerning media, this is where it really grew into a larger force. Costuming, magazines, and all sorts of things made by nerds for nerds became a mainstay in those communities. But there's something else that went alongside it. You see, nerds have never really been good about keeping things to themselves. So, wearing clothes about their interests, or just plain not shutting up about them, became a common thing in their lives. And we need look no further to where this became apparent. The public school. Public schools are good for one thing, if nothing else. Showing that kids are brutal. So, the nerd's natural predator in this environment were bullies. And I'm talking about the classic bully. Mean words, stolen lunch money, harassment, you know the stereotype. Not just saying somebody else is wrong on the internet, or saying that something is bad. That's not the same as bullying. While curbing a nerd's social awkwardness through ostracization and harassment isn't morally correct, it resulted in nerds being more careful about what they said and did, and fostered at least some basic survival instinct in the masses. Cut to the birth of the internet in the late 90s. Nerds had always been big into technology, so they were early adapters of it. And some of the first things they did was to carve out their own personal online space. Away from bullies and parental figures that told them what they liked was dumb or childish or whatever. And in this environment, they built specific communities where they had complete control. Meaning anyone that didn't abide by their desires was removed. Fine if you're all by yourself, but these people have larger communities that they were over, and in the present day, these have all morphed into soft, easily offended spaces that have rules against even being critical against a brand or thing they like as though it were a person. They want only comfort at all times. They don't want to have to deal with the unpleasantness of criticism or the reality of what an environment like that creates. This is where we'll now talk about the Law of the Jungle. Now this is a law of the jungle, as old and as true as the sky, and the wolf that shall keep it may prosper, but the wolf that shall break it must die. I have long since been a student of nature. I've studied zoology for quite some time, because animals and their ecosystems fascinate me. For as powerful as these creatures are, one change to their ecosystem can cause ripple effects not foreseen. Now, I'm a Christian, which means I believe man to be made in the image of God, that we have a dominion over this world. However, we are not its rule makers in the primal sense, and we are just as much bound to the rules of nature as the beasts in the field. Which means when something goes out of place, things go awry. A good example of what I'm talking about in nature is the case of Yellowstone National Park. Several years ago, the park was devoid of wolves, a natural predator in such environments. As such, the prey animals bred too quickly, destroyed land, and caused other ecological imbalances to the point that Yellowstone did something that would make softer people uncomfortable. They brought the wolves back. And doing so had large effects on both animal life and the plant life. It even changed how water runs in the park. I put a link in the description of what happened for you all to check out after this video, because it is indeed truly fascinating. I believe we learn a lot about ourselves by understanding nature, and what is to be learned is this. Nerds having conflict-free spaces dominating their online experiences have made them mentally and morally weak. Without an apex creature to keep them in check, they've become unhealthy. It's something I've touched on in a couple of videos, but here's where I lay some things out for you. A few weeks ago, two specific events happened. One was Tony from Analog Toys exposing the lies and hypocrisy of Michael Mercy. He pointed out that Mercy was two-faced and lied to his audience of 60,000 people. This was all backed up by evidence, facts, data. I did my own stream, driving the point of his hypocrisy further in based on the previous writings of Mercy. Writings which, by the way, he pulled down after the stream. Because he was hoping no one would see if he did so. Too bad for him, the internet never forgets. The other event involved that junk man, a.k.a. Darren Chambers, getting mad that I made fun of him for bad arguments and actions, and decided the proper response was to accuse me of child grooming. The P word, since YouTube doesn't like it being actually said. 
so I responded defending myself. And in many cases, people used their brains and recognized that these people were morally out of line. But there were other comments, though, that chose instead to take another path. And what path would that be? Why, getting upset that I responded. These clowns genuinely think the best response to someone doing something immoral is to not hold them accountable. Their reason? Because I'm a toy channel. Firstly, no, this isn't a toy channel. I talk about toys occasionally and I review them, but this channel has no special focus on them. There was also talk about how this is just drama. If this is your value, then I would like to have a discussion with your parents to find out where they failed in raising you. I find it amazing how when people do scummy things, these people are nowhere in sight. But when you hit them back, they trip over themselves to try and tell you how you were in the wrong for responding. I want to be clear here. If your first response to someone defending themselves from someone else's immoral actions, or calling out these actions, is for you to respond negatively to the attacked party, then you're morally bankrupt. Please either grow a brain or get a lobotomy. Because when you tell them to explain themselves, these clowns always pivot to something else because they know they don't have an argument. The truth is there's a reason for that. And the reason is actually found in the majority of their remarks. They don't like it when you deal with unpleasant things. They just want you to talk about toys. Someone doing something immoral? Better ignore it so we can feed our dopamine addiction and talk about toys. There's a word for people who actively and continually avoid unpleasant things just to have fun and talk about toys. The word is child. And for those of you that tried to say my response to the situations were childish, I have nothing but derisive laughter for you. Because your standards and metrics for adulthood ultimately comes down to letting people be garbage without opposition. Why in the world would you think I would consider you a moral standard for anything? You're a gutless coward. And this is where the brick wall gets hit. Nerd culture has become so comfortable, so obsessed with positivity and not dealing with adversity that they demand silence when someone is being evil. This is what happens when there's no other force to keep nerd community entitlement at bay. So let me be clear here. I'm under no obligation to run my channel in a way that suits you. I am under no obligation to ignore the immoral actions of people in these communities for your personal comfort. And I am absolutely under no obligation to not tear into you when you get stupid in my comments section. If you want softness, go back to hugging your teddy bears. The only way to correct the poor moral leanings and obsession with being conflict-adverse in nerd spaces is to combat it openly. To return the wolves to Yellowstone. Or in this case the lions to the savannas. Going forward, this channel is going to be talking more about the problems with corporate shoveling and nostalgia. Talking more about content creators that are willing to sell out their communities just so they can be the first to get toys. I am going to actively target them, expose how they operate, and do so publicly in every possible way. This won't be limited to just toy channels either. I'll also be hitting corporations, and I'll also be hitting outrage-baiting grifters within nerd circles too. Professor Geek, The Quartering, and Fourth Age have all been hit before, and they, like the elders like them, will be catching these hands again. If it makes you uncomfortable that I'm going to hit creators you like, then I recommend you check your biases at the door and pay attention to the factual information being presented instead of whatever feeds your cognitive bias. If you want to call me a bully for holding people accountable, you're welcome to. You're also welcome to take the wig and nose to go along with your floppy shoes and head back to the circus you came from. The term bully in online spaces ran by adults is absolutely laughable. If you equate to true things being said as bullying, then I recommend you stay away from this channel so I don't publicly embarrass you. And while you're at it, make sure to give me your lunch money, nerd. A healthy ecosystem requires the weaker among it to be culled so the environment will stay in balance. This was literally in The Lion King. I shouldn't have to explain this to adults, but here I am. Calling out and addressing these people is exactly what that is in the online space. If you want to get super mad and argue about it, there's a link in the description. Just make sure you bring an actual argument instead of just hurt feelings. 
And if you're so scared of getting in a call with me to argue about this that you feel the need to spill your verbal diarrhea all over my comment section, I'm going to just make fun of you for being an adult that has no courage, you stupid pussy. And if you're offended by my language, you can sit and spin. You see, toys are fine. So are cartoons and comics. But when you're so adamant to feed an addiction to these things that you excuse immoral actions, it's time for self-reflection. And if that requires me shoving your face in the mirror like some do with the mess their dogs make on the floor, then that's what I'll do. And I won't apologize for it. Your parents failed you, so I'll have to pick up the slack. I'm Lyo Convoy. If you're not any of the types of people I described here, have a good night. If you are, enjoy the peaceful sleep while you can. You won't have much more going forward. Ladies... Gentlemen, you have eaten well. You have eaten Gotham's wealth. In spirit, your feast is nearly over. From this moment on, none of you are safe. <laughs>